Today I'm here to do a comparison of Neocolor 2 and Neocolor 1. Um, as a mixed media artist, I have used Neocolor 2s for several years um, in my incorporated into my mixed media artworks. The Neocolor 1s are relatively uh, new to me and I got these for specific purposes in my mixed media artwork as well. So today I just kind of want to play around with both of them and um, kind of see what each can do and the advantages, the pros and cons of each. So to do that, I thought I'd just spend some time um, playing in my sketchbook with them, kind of swatching and, and um, putting them through the paces and seeing what they can do. So hope you join me along for that and pull up your own journal and let's have fun. The journal I'm using is a lip churn or however you say that and it is not especially good for water media but it does have a very smooth surface and it does work pretty well with these crayons both the one and the two. So the main difference between the Neo Color 2 and the Neo Color 1 is that the Neo Color 2 is water soluble. And here I'm showing just I colored a bit on the paper and then used a wet paintbrush to go over it. And now I'm putting water onto the page and using the crayon to work into that wet patch. Either, either of those work very nicely. The crayons um, make a lot of uh, rich pigment there. And now I'm using a wet paintbrush to just kind of flick some of that pigment off of the crayon onto the page and that is one of my favorite looks that these crayons can achieve. Then I'm using the kind of damp still crayon to just put down a field of solid color and it really does fill in, fill in very nicely. It's kind of buttery feeling, very smooth and nice. You can also use it dry to uh, give a more textured look. I'm using a second color to blend back into that wet um, nail color two to layer on top of um, and it does just blend the second nail color just blends in with the first nail color um, to a certain extent and so that's really nice you can mix the colors here I'm adding a green to that kind of teal and it changes um, the color the colors mixed together to make a third color. Um, another way I like to use these is just I'm using one sideways here to do a, a bigger patch of textured area. It does make very nice uh, looking texture on the page using the crayons this way. And here I'm going in with a second color again doing some blending um, and showing how you can build up those layers of color and really gives it a, a rich, nice look. I, I like that ability of these Neo Color 2s. Now I'm taking some matte acrylic paint and just layering on top of. A lot of my work um, is done in layers of mediums and colors and so on. And so I often want to layer over with a coat of paint or um, other mediums. And so you can see here, I hope that you're able to see that layering over the Neo Color 2 with the paint actually the colors blend together and actually alters the color of the paint because it has some of the Neo Color 2 mixed in. I don't know how evident that is on the screen here, but when I am taking this kind of coral color over the teal crayon that I've done, um, it makes a darker color. Um, here, I think it'll be a little easier to see where this color is a little bit more intense, and you can see that that actually is darkening that color and it's no longer the same coral color that I applied before. And that's fine, that can be a good effect, but it's good to know that that's what happens when you 
try to layer over the Neo Color too. Here I'm just mixing it with some of that um, wet, uh, almost watercolory media where I had washed out the little patch of Neo Color to at the top. And you can see again that it actually mixes in with the paint color. Now I'm going to try coloring a patch of a dark color as well as a light color, which I choose white for that, um, to try to see what happens if I layer the paint over those, um, like a watercolor. I'm getting out my water soluble paint palette here which contains watercolor gouache and actually um, shaved Neo Color 2 crayons. The ones that look kind of chunky like this one that I'm using right now is actually a Neo Color 2. So I'm using it as um, a watercolor and they work very nicely for that and I enjoy having them in the palette. And you can see that they're slightly more opaque than a watercolor, but um, still pretty transparent. So I do enjoy using, especially I have a wide range of colors in the Nail Color too, and it just gives me more options in my uh, water-soluble palette. Now I'm using um, a, some watercolor to layer over those little patches of Nail Color 2 I put down. You can see that blue kind of blending with the pink to make a purple. And then where I had colored the white, um, you see a little bit of a resist happening. It's kind of subtle, but it's there. And that can be um, a fun look in a piece too. And so I do enjoy that effect. So since the white is so pale, you don't really see it mixing in or changing colors like you would um, with the blue uh, above it. But you can see that they do blend, but they also maintain a little bit of integrity of the original um, Neo Color 2. Uh, this blue that I'm putting on now is also Neo Color 2, which I have put in a little pan. Um, this one was a full pan that I have made um, and added to my palette. So I've taken a few minutes to make some notes on my page about the qualities that I see with the Neo Color 2. And now I'm ready to pull out my Neo Color 1, which are still in their original box, still pretty new. I have used them, but not a whole lot yet. So I'm going to kind of check them out here a little more officially, see what I think of them. I'm starting out with some marks just like I did with the Neo Color 2 and I'm going to try um, with a water brush just go running um, some water over the top of that and as you can see it does not budge so compared with the Neo Color 2 you immediately see that there's a lot of difference next I'm trying coloring into a wet patch on the page and you can see that it barely even works um, coloring on top of water so immediately we see some big differences. I try flinging off some color um, like I did with the Nail Color 2 and nothing happens. So right away with, with water involved, we see the most significant differences between the Nail Color 2 and the Nail Color 1. Now I'm coloring a little patch and I can get a very similar looking texture with it. I can also blend um, with other Neo Color ones, other colors, and um, to create another color um, with them. However, they don't blend quite as much. It's a little bit more of the second color covering up the first color, I think. Um, I can also color and get a very nice solid patch, and it's not very smeary. And so that's nice. That's a really nice quality. Um, I'm getting some more of that texture um, going here. And I'm going to try layering on top of it. First with another Neo Color 1. Um, like I did before. And 
again I'm feeling like even though these are a little bit transparent so you're seeing some of the uh, layer underneath coming through it doesn't it isn't really mixing um, it's more like a little of it showing through now I'm going to try it with some acrylic paint layered on top again layering is a something I do a lot in mixed media artwork and so it's important for me to know what happens and this is interesting because I feel like um, the color since it doesn't bleed it's not blending in with the paint I'm putting on top but I it does like show through and so it doesn't alter the color of the paint but um, it does you know show through a little bit so so which in effect um, gives you a switch of color so now I'm just kind of layering on more paint to see what happens if you have you know a thicker um, coat of paint or multiple coats of paint and you can you know just totally cover up with enough paint you can totally cover up the color of the Neo Color 1. Now I'm pulling out a similar blue as I used on the Neo Color 2 and, and also a white to do some put some marks on the paper and so I can do a test to see how these work as a resist. Pulling out the same watercolors using the same color even, I am going to paint over um, these marks and see what happens. And as you see, there is much less blending and color shifting that uh, purpley blue does not mix in with the paint like it did on the left and you see a bit of resist happening but I'm kind of surprised it's not more I kind of expected it to be more of a resist than the nail color too but that doesn't really seem to be a ca the case at least in this example I mean adding on another layer of paint to make it a little darker and see what happens and I don't see a strong resist uh, situation happening. I'm trying some more layering. I'm using some of the Neo Color 2 that's in my water soluble palette and layering it over the Neo Color 1 and we see that those colors do not uh, budge. They do not blend together. I'm trying it again over the marks that I made and it still it just does not budge so that is a very handy thing I can use Neo Color 1 on a on a previous layer and know that I can layer over it even with the Neo Color 2 and that it's not going to change the color I'm going back to the resist idea again because I'm still kind of surprised that there wasn't more of a resist effect so I'm trying it with as resist with the Neo Color 2. I'm also going back to that watercolor patch and blotting some of the um, excess water off and that does pull out a bit of that resist appearance. Um, so interesting to know. It, it does definitely there is a little bit of a resist but it's not quite as strong as I expected. Now I'm reaching for a, a green Neo Color 1 and a blue Neo Color 2. And I want to just see how if I just color directly. So the Neo Color 1 first, or the, excuse me, the Neo Color 2 first with the Neo Color 1 on top. And that gives a certain look. And now I'm trying the Neo Color 1 first with the Neo Color 2 on top. And um, I don't see a lot of blending here. As you see can see you know the colors just kind of layer um, without a lot of blending. I'm also going to do a little bit of mark making with the Neo Color 1 up here in the corner with the little green circles um, and I'm going to try layering some of the watercolor on top of that and again we just see it not budging that just maintains its integrity and does not mix in with the pink so this is really could be handy when I want the marks to still say stay evident and not be um, you know bleeding and blending 
um, I think that will be very handy. Here I'm brushing water over those two little uh, experiments that I did down in the bottom corner to see what happens when I brush water over it and I expect that the nail color 2 will um, bleed and blend while the nail color 1 does not but since they're layered on top of each other it might be interesting to see how they react. So you can see the one with the nail color 1 on top um, it just hardly anything happens. When the Neo Color 2 is on the bottom, we see a little bit of uh, more effect there. The next thing I want to try is to see if this um, just writing with a pen will work on top. Um, I'm also just doing making some notes like I did on the previous page. You can see that it barely works a little bit um, on when I have used the Neo Color 2 as a watercolor out of my palette. Um, however, when I try uh, writing over what things that I have directly colored on, it does not work very well. And that's true for both the Neo Color 1 and the Neo Color 2. The last thing I want to try today is, uh, since I'm going to use the Neo Color 1 as kind of a substitute for oil pastels in my layered artwork, I want to try to see how it actually acts with the oil pastel. What happens if I blend the two of them together or layer one over the other? And so this is kind of interesting to see what happens. They actually blend together fairly nicely. We have the wax of the Neo Color 2 and the oil of the oil pastels um, actually blending decently well. So you see me doing multiple layers here on top of each other. And I really kind of like the effect that it gives. And so I think that's something I may think about trying to do more. It, the Neo Color 1 is a little bit less messy than an oil pastel. And that is advantageous as far as I'm concerned to not have that stickiness of the oil pastel. But yet by blending them together, I think you kind of get the best of both worlds. I'm going to try it again with um, a couple different colors here with the green oil pastel and then layering that with some blue nail color one and see what um, if I get a similar result. So now the nail color one is pretty dark and so I think it kind of makes a difference if you put which one you put on first. Um, because the nail color one actually covers a fair bit of the oil pastel up. Now if I use a yellow, a lighter color, we actually see a little bit more of that blending effect. So one thing that can be good, but it also can be bad about oil pastels, is how smudgy they are. Um, which is nice when you're trying to blend them together, but also not so nice when they get um, all messy and they smudge when you don't want them to. So as you can see it does you do get more smudging when you um, are using the oil pastel in with the Neo Color 2. And here I'm just trying to do um, a little bit of layering to see if I can mark with the Neo Color 1 on top of that oil pastel mix and as you see um, it does work. So that's all very interesting and um, I may try to use the oil pastel and the Neo Color 1 in conjunction with each other in a mixed media art piece. Now to play fair, I feel like I need to try the Neo Color 2 with the oil pastels also, even though they, um, I feel like, kind of work opposite in that the Neo Color 2 is water soluble and the oil pastel advantage of those is that they are not. But let's just try and see what happens if we mix the two of those together. So they also seem to blend together okay, which is interesting. Um, so I think, you know, they could be layered as well. The difference will be that the Neo Color 2 portion of the equation uh, will activate with water while the oil pastel is not, which 
in it on its own rights could be a interesting combination. Drying, washing some water over that and the part with the nail color too as the top layer obviously bled much more than the one that had the oil pastel on top. And of course, as expected, when I brush water over the Neo Color 1 and oil pastel combinations, uh, we don't see any movement happening. All in all, I don't have one to recommend over the other just because they are so different and would be of such different um, uses in your sketchbooks or artwork. So it just kind of depends on what kind of work you like to do. If you want to do um, just a single layer of laying down some nice solid color, I would say get the Neo Color 1. If you want the reactivity or, you know, the effects, the watercolor type effects of the um, Neo Color 2, then that would be the route to go. The color range is really great on both of them. Um, here I'm just showing two uh, similar greens that I happen to have. Um, and the color values as you use them are very similar. The coverage is pretty similar. And um, one thing I'm n taking note of is the difference in the wrappers is a little bit subtle. So I... I'm kind of being mindful and trying to record in my mind um, the difference between the two so I don't get them mixed up. But um, that's kind of my little experiment here. Okay, I think that kind of sums up um, using these and I have a better feel for how to use them in my artwork. If I want splatter or watercolor effect, or um, to be able to blend two uh, neo colors together, I'm going to want the neo color too, or also use it as a watercolor. I use it in the watercolor pans. If I want to layer on acrylic and have them mixed together um, and become, you know, an adjusted color, um, then that is what I want. If I want it to um, stay uh, true to its like how I put it down e no matter what I put on top then I want the Neo Color 1 which does not budge when I do wet on top. If I want to work on wet I want the Neo Color 2 because the Neo Color 1 does not work well on top of wet. If I want to blend with oil pastel this I can get a very neat effect with the Neo Color 1, not so desirable in the Neo Color 2. If I want um, to be able to layer like paint on top and not have the color of the paint be altered, then I am going to want the Neo Color 1. Um, they both kind of surprisingly work about as well as a resist. I did not have a whole lot of difference there. However, if it's a, like this was on white, if I'm using a color, obviously the integrity of the color got changed on the Neo Color 2 and not on the Neo Color 1. And then if I want to layer um, the Neo Color 1 with the Neo Color 2, that can be interesting as well. And um, this one, I put the Neo Color 2 down first and then the Neo Color 1. The Neo Color 1 did not budge, but the Neo Color 2 underneath kind of washed out and then this one was vice versa. I put the Neo Color 1 down first and then the Neo Color 2. So um, just really depends on what you want to use. They both have attributes that I'm very excited about. This helps me understand when to use which one and I hope it's helped you too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.